This is the Logitech Lift, a very special mouse I've been using for my creative work over the past month. At first glance, many people might think that there was some kind of mix-up at the factory with the way this thing looks, but this design is very much intentional and even specifically crafted to be ergonomic. For those unfamiliar, ergonomic computer accessories are designed in a way as to be more efficient and healthy for the user and tend to conform to the way our bodies naturally work rather than our bodies needing to conform to the unnatural but conventional accessories we typically see on store shelves. And when it comes to mice in particular, the design that we're all familiar with is actually less of a natural fit to our bodies and can have various health implications with excessive use over time. And I'm sure most viewers have experienced some kind of fatigue, stress, or even some pain caused by prolonged use of a mouse. The ergonomic handshake style of grip on the Logitech Lift puts less strain on our hands or wrists, so you should in theory be able to work with less stress on your body for longer periods of time. And as a longtime user of ergonomic mice, I personally find that they do exactly that, but I can also see someone who doesn't have any experience with these being a bit skeptical. So I would encourage anyone watching to try this out. You don't need an actual mouse, just try to mimic the position you would use to hold a more conventional mouse. And then switch to about a 57 degree tilt to simulate this handshake grip that we see on ergonomic mice like the Logitech Lift. And I think many people will find that even just pretending to switch to the handshake style grip will combat kind of the slouched posture that you have when using a traditional mouse and leaves you with a much better posture. And at the same time, you should also feel that your hand, wrist, and forearm become more relaxed in this handshake style position. So I think you could see how this ergonomic grip over time is a healthier approach, especially for those that work long hours on computers. Ergonomic and more healthy habits have been central in my creative workflow for a long time now, from standing desks to vertical mice. And in that time, my go-to has always been another Logitech mouse, the MX Vertical, which shares a lot of features and design notes with its younger sibling. So in this video, I want to talk about my real-world experiences using the Logitech Lift for work, as well as compare it to the MX Vertical, as I think most people interested in one of these mice will also be considering the other. According to Logitech's own hand size chart, I have medium sized hands at around 3 credit cards tall. I would also recommend viewers measure their hands in the same way, because after all, everyone's hands are different and we have different preferences, but having some kind of metric or measurement like this should help give you a better idea if the lift is going to work for you or not, and if this review applies for you or not. That being said, the lift is definitely on the smaller side when it comes to ergonomic mice. At first, switching from the MX Vertical, the lift immediately felt cramped, to the point where I could barely move a finger without it sliding off the mouse completely. And while I was a bit concerned about this in my first look video, I'm happy to report that after just a few days actually working with the lift, that kind of cramp feeling melts away into the background, and I was just as comfortable working with it as I do when I use the MX Vertical. That being said, one thing that did stand out to me was the lift is weighted a bit differently than the MX Vertical, being more bottom heavy. But again, in testing, I didn't find it to be heavy enough to say affect my movement speed or accuracy compared to the lighter MX Vertical. After the size and weight, what immediately jumped out to me was how soft and quiet the operation is on the new lift. The MX Vertical has a different, very distinct click and scroll sound, but the lift is almost silent in comparison. At the same time, the physical click is also very dampered on the lift, to the point where I sometimes question whether I successfully clicked or not, just for a brief moment. I'm sure it's not a huge deal to most people, but this kind of little disconnect is just enough to break me out of my flow when say editing video, and can be a little bit annoying needing to make sure that I perform the task correctly. I never second guess myself like this when I'm using the MX Vertical, and after putting the lift through some proper work tasks, I feel that the MX Vertical is still my preference when it comes to professional workflows on apps like Clip Studio, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. While both of these mice feature a lot of customizable shortcut buttons, the MX Verticals are more accessible and in a way similar to how I feel about the clicks, instill confidence when clicked with clear actuation points as well as some auditory feedback. On the other hand, the inner thumb buttons and scroll wheel are fairly similar on both of these models but I'd say that the lift has a fairly low actuation force and possibly even shorter travel distance, meaning it takes less actual force and travel distance as you click to actually input a command. This is in part what makes it feel softer and less noisy, 
but also I think contributes to the reason I occasionally get those missed or questionable inputs. This is admittedly a little bit nitpicky, but there is one feature that I think separates these two models when it comes to professional workflows. And that would be this customizable button that by default changes the cursor's sensitivity. On the MX vertical, you can access it without shifting your grip or breaking your flow, but on the lift, it is positioned in a really awkward place and you kind of have to stop what you're doing and shift your grip to press the button, which in many cases will be less convenient and efficient than just using a keyboard shortcut or a gesture type shortcut. That being said, I suspect that not everyone that even picks up one of these mice is going to take advantage of every single shortcut button, and it's not necessarily to deter people away from the lift, but just to highlight the fact that the MX vertical is a little bit better when it comes to these very professional and complex workflow situations. In fact, what criticisms I might have for the lift when it comes to working at the office can be completely flipped around when it comes to what mouse I want to take down to the cafe. Outside of the house, the bulkier, louder, and internal battery-powered MX Vertical is much less appealing, especially because there's no place to store the dongle when you're transporting it. The lift really shines outside of the house, where my work is a little bit less intense and I don't need as many function buttons as I can get. The smaller size, built-in dongle compartment, amazing two-year battery life off of a AA, and especially the quiet operation means I've been splitting my time between the MX Vertical at home and the lift when I'm out on the go. And as someone who uses a variety of different mobile devices while I am on the go, I really appreciate the easily accessible dongle that the lift has. And for other devices, Bluetooth seems to have a nice stable connection. Some viewers of the first impressions did ask me about the quality of connection, as well as if there was any latency. So I did a simple test here between the two. And of course, filming a screen will not always give you a perfect representation of what a human would experience in real life. But for my use, there doesn't really seem to be a significant difference to me on video or in my own experience. And since they have Bluetooth connectivity, I went ahead and tried the lift on my iPad. While both mice of course maintain their ergonomic benefits, the other functionality and the overall experience of using them on mobile operating systems can be a little lackluster. It's not a problem with compatibility or anything like that, I just think that mobile operating systems like iPadOS are more designed to be used with a trackpad rather than a separate dedicated mouse. Other noticeable differences would be the curved top to the lift versus the more straight edge on the MX vertical. I suppose the lift is slightly more ergonomic in that sense, allowing your fingers to rest at that much more of a comfortable angle, but it doesn't seem like enough of a difference to be a deciding factor, at least not in my use. At the end of the day, both of these mice check a lot of the same boxes. I don't often like to boil things down too much in my reviews and like to let the viewers decide for themselves, but if you're stuck between these two as a right-handed user, I'd say the lift is great for people that work in many different places, and especially those that work around people, the dongle, overall size, battery life and quietness, make it a much better choice for use outside of the house. I'm happy now to have the option to take it with me on the go and continue to use ergonomic mice wherever I might go. For righties that mostly work in one place, the MX Vertical offers just a little bit more pro functionality and the quirks of an internal battery that needs charging, a separate loose dongle, and large size aren't really a big deal if you don't take it out of the house. And when it comes to left-handed users, the lift is going to be your only option when it comes to Logitech vertical mice, at least at the moment. So I hope you found this video interesting or informative. If you have anyone in your life that has constant wrist pain or works a lot on a computer, I would really appreciate it if you shared this video. I think it would be beneficial to them and would definitely help me out. So I'm Skipen, thank you so much for watching. So I was writing the script for this video on an iPad with Logitech's uh, like iPad case and it sits flat with a little trackpad. And by the end of it, I definitely felt a lot of wrist strain. I think it shows how beneficial these ergonomic tools can be, especially for those that foresee themselves like working on a computer for maybe the rest of their life. So the next item might be a ergonomic keyboard. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. I would really appreciate that. Thanks.